Hello, my name is C.C. Richards. And I'm Dr. Selena Richards. We want to take this opportunity to welcome all of our viewers here at the Conversation Corner. We're excited on tonight to share some great things with you. First of all, we want to share a little bit of introduction about who we are. Again, I'm C.C. Richards. Uh, my wife and I are both evangelists. We're ministers of the gospel, and we love the Lord. We've been married 37 years, ladies and gentlemen. We just celebrated our 37th anniversary. Uh, we, we, we live in a great state of North Carolina, and we have two adult children, eight beautiful grandchildren, and I'm telling you, we tremendously are blessed. And this is a little bit about me. I want you to hear about a little bit about my wife. Well, good evening. How's everybody doing out there? We're excited to be here with you all tonight. And as my husband said, we're going to talk about things over the course of the airings of the shows and just want you to know who you're talking to a little bit. Uh, I am one of six girls. Uh, as my husband already stated, we've got two adult children and eight grands. Uh, we've worked in banking and law enforcement, and we have just been serial entrepreneurs because we realized that one of the things about life is that we wanted to make sure we live the kind of life we wanted, not the life we had to live or were forced to live. And so we've done banking, we are uh, active in real estate, we're active in sales, and we're active clearly in ministry. We love the Lord and we want to help people get over the hurdles and get over things that bind them up and block them from having the success that God would have them to have. And so during the course of our shows and the course of our conversation here in the conversation room, in the conversation corner, I like saying room because I feel like we've got some space to work, but here in the conversation corner, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. So we're going to invite you right now so we don't forget, go on over to our Facebook page, join the group, that way you can comment, ask questions, have topics that you might even want to talk about. And so it's the conversation corner with Cece and Dr. Selena. Join us over there, put your comments in, say hi to us from around the country and even around the world if you're joining us out there. And so we're, tonight, we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're going to be talking to you about. That way you can join us in, join in with us, and join the conversation. Yeah. Just like, for example, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about the season of change. You know, we're getting ready. We're ending summer, and we're getting ready to start the fall season. And we're going to talk about season of change because a lot of people, we realize, get stuck in different seasons of their lives and don't know how to really navigate it. You know, and also just like Dr. Selena was saying, once you go over to our Facebook page or the conversation corner, we also, we want you to put some input in there, some, some, some questions. Uh, uh, we want to have some feedback from you and we want to have a great time of dialoguing with you through that medium as well. And also there's some information where if you want to purchase one of our books, you know, we have three books that Dr. Selena and I have written. And I would love to be able to, to, to share that information because these books are very, very life-changing. And uh, the first book is called A Cure for Poverty. This is this book right here in the middle, A Cure for Poverty. Very, very powerful book on leadership. And if you're in business, it will definitely bless your life. Also, Dr. Selena wrote a book on... Called Bound in My Freedom. And the contradiction of title was done on purpose because people think, how can you be bound and free at the same time? Well, we're going to get into that later on in the course of our conversations here. And the final book is called Six Days of Silence. And people say, well, that's a very interesting title. Well, as you've heard, we've been married 37 years. And in 37 years, my husband was silent for six days. And we're going to talk about what that means. We're not going to give you the whole thing right now. But we're going to talk about that six days of silence and what that whole journey was all about. But tonight, we want to just go a little bit deeper, uh, talk about some life experiences that have formed us and caused us to be who and what and how we are today. Um, so I want my husband to share a little bit about some things that have motivated him to want to do the things that we do, the evangelism and the outreach and the seminars and ministry that we engaged in. Um, so he's going to share a little bit about that. Absolutely. You know, and we were talking about that, you know, and it's, it's a subject that we that we are all end up uh, trying to navigate through seasons, different seasons of change, you know, as we grow, as we develop, as we get stuck, as we wonder, because, you know, a lot of people have asked me, man, I wonder what God's purpose is for my life. You know, they know we love the Lord. You know, they know we pray. and know, they know we read our word, read the Bible. 
But a lot of people are like, I really want to know what God's purpose is for my life. And, you know, a lot of people say, I'm stuck. I want to know and, 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 and I prayed, but I don't really get answers. Dr. Selena, what do you think about when people get stuck, you know, not really understanding, even acknowledging or understanding what season that they're even in to be able to navigate through that? Well, first of all, we, we, we want to always clarify some things. You know, we know there's a general call. There's a general purpose for all of us as believers. And that is to just share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we should all be doing. So when we think about purpose and what that looks like and what that means, we have to first remember that. That's our first and main calling is to, to, to share, to give people the hope, give people that the alternatives to let them know there's some options mm -hmm. out there of things to do and how to live their life. You know, based on our 37 years now, we are happily married, but don't get it twisted. There have been times when we weren't. Yeah. There have been times, that season, as he called it, where we weren't. There was that season where things were really, really mm -hmm. crazy, and we had to navigate through that. So, as I was saying about purpose, we have to realize that there is that general call first, that general purpose that we all must fulfill. But then secondly, and a little bit more specifically, is what God would have you to do. I shared with my husband many, many years ago, and as he says, it set him free. Where you are that day, that's your assignment. So as you're building that specific call, that specific thing that God may have you to do, just know that as in the walking out of that, where your feet are, that's the assignment for that moment. You know, in today's vernacular, you'll see and hear people say, oh, they understood the assignment. But on a very serious note, we have assignments. For example, we've got two adult children. There was a season in my life where I was responsible for pouring in to two children. Well, they're adults now. They're grown, married adults with children of their own. So my purpose didn't change. The application changed. Mm. I'm still a parent to two children. Mm. But now I'm a resource. Now I'm a support system. I don't have to make decisions for them, but I can advise them such that they can make solid and sound decisions for themselves. So don't let the stress of purpose burden you. Just remember that there's a general call of serving the Lord first and foremost. And then secondly, where you are that day and in that moment. And so as you're changing those seasons, I call them chapters even, you know, when your children are little, you have certain assignments and certain roles you have to fulfill. Then when they become teenagers, that role adjusts a little bit. And then, of course, as I just said, when they become adults, that role changes even the more. And it doesn't mean it's any less stressful because you care about those kids the same now that they're adults as you did when they were little babies in your arm. You want to protect them. You want to guide them. You want to teach them everything you can so that they can be better, stronger, more grounded adults. And it's very important that we learn those seasons so that we know how to prepare for them. When it's hurricane season, you hear the term batten down the hatches. You've got to know what season your life is in. If that's a changing of a job, if that's a changing of an organization or relationships that are in your life, you've got to be able to grasp that season and that change. And it doesn't necessarily mean you leave something. It just means you adapt even within that situation. Sometimes it does mean leaving, but it doesn't always mean that. And so we're talking about that season of change because it's so important for people to understand that. Today we have a lot of issues with people being depressed, you know, mm -hmm. and, and overwhelmed and burdened, even to pastors who are shutting down churches and being overwhelmed by the circumstances of life. But to me, that just means they've lost sight of their purpose. We are to assist God in mentoring. We are to assist God in leading and guiding people. But we're not God and we're not their God. And so we should never be so overwhelmed with trying to carry or bear the burden that's God's to carry. God said he would minister to the people, but he would use us as instruments. And so we've got to remember to stay in our right place so that as these seasons come upon us, we're better prepared for them. You know, I saw a, uh, I saw an illustration one time. You know, for example, like if you, we're getting ready to go into the fall season. So if you um, go into the winter time, if you go in the winter time and you have shorts on and a tank top, what you know, what have you, and um, and it's freezing outside, you know, people are gonna look at you really strange because you're not you're not dressed 
appropriately for the season that you're in. And I think from a mental perspective, I think a lot of people even confuse um, to that when the seasons of their lives shift, mm -hmm. you know, and they get caught, they get caught in that, in that shift, you know, what are some of the ways, what, what can, like, for example, some people suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. Some people are afraid or ashamed or embarrassed to really share, you know, where they are or where they think they are, or what they're going through, or even ask for help. Right. You know, um, could, can you relate or can you imagine um, how could we help someone who may be stuck? Are there signs? Well, you know, one thing I, and I'll, we will reference because it is very, very key and very central to our specific lives. Our children are the most important things on the earth to us. And so we literally have built everything we do either for them or with them or because of them. And so we're going to reference our kids a lot. We just want to give y'all that heads up. Y'all going to say, they talk about their kids a lot. Well, that's because they're so important to us. Um, i give you an example. Uh, when my daughter was younger, because my daughter is the oldest, when she was younger, there was a mother in the church, an older mother in the church. And she had one daughter. And her daughter was, even when she was a teenager, was very graceful and very mannerable and very respectful. Now, when we talk about seasons of change, see, when they're babies and they're cute and you're sitting them in your lap and all you do is kiss on them and it's easy, it's easy. But when they started to grow and start making decisions, even as children, you, you need to remember that season that's shifting between that cute little baby to that adult or that teenager that you're now preparing and forming. And so this mother of the church, I respected her to the hilt. And so I watched, I gleaned from her how she was raising her daughter, the input and the manner in which she raised her. And so I tried to mimic that as much as I could watching her as she raised her daughter. And so today, her daughter, who's now married, wow with children and they are pastoring a church. Wow. And so I watched that young lady grow and develop and be, be very mannerable, very respectful, and to be very successful now and even in her own right. But that came with acknowledging, like you said, acknowledging that it's okay to need help. It's okay to yeah. need to ask someone, how do I do that part? You know, the Bible says that the older women should teach the younger women. Well, we don't have a lot of that going on today. Maybe at your church, maybe in your life. But I see there's a big gap where the older women are not teaching the younger women. For example, I was in a conversation with some folk, and I remember saying to them, my grandmother said, that's Miss so-and-so, and that's Mr. so-and-so, or mm -hmm. Aunt somebody. You didn't call adults by their first name. Mm -hmm. Today, that's common. We've even heard stories where children are punished or corrected because they called an adult by Miss or Mr. They just said, call me by my first name. Well, what resonates with me concerning that as an example is that the children have to be taught how to be respectful because now today they're walking in a room and not even speak to you. Mm -hmm. And you don't teach them to do that. My grandma said, you walk in a room, you speak because that's showing manner. That's showing some um, culture for that term to use it lightly. Uh, but it's these basic foundations of life that people are not being taught today. Mm -hmm. And so just because I say older, that doesn't mean the old gray-haired mother, which is fine, but even the ones that are in their 30s because they're old compared to that 15-year-old or the ones in their 40s or 50s. You're old compared to somebody. And so when it says the older women teaching, absolutely, we need those 70 and 80-year-old seasoned mothers because they can pour wisdom into us right. that we will need in order to survive the challenges mm -hmm. that are coming. Because we can guarantee you they're coming, whether that's in your children or your jobs or your relationships or your health, whatever it might be, those challenges come and the wisdom that they bring you can help you get through. i give you another example. My grandmother used to say to me, somebody's going to bend. And likely it's going to be you. And she meant that in reference to being married. You know, we get a divorce rate in the church is as high as it is in the world right. because people don't want to work together. They don't want to compromise. They don't want to figure out how do we make this thing that we wanted actually work and last. Mm -hmm. 
And that, that statement of bending doesn't mean you become a doormat. It doesn't become you are allowed to be abused. Mm -hmm. It just means you understand that this is a partnership that you are building so that you can have a blessed and prosperous relationship. Thus, your children can grow in a blessed and prosperous house. Well, you know, when, when people get frustrated, though, when they get frustrated or get confused or get turned upside down due to life circumstances, it's perhaps uh, beyond their control. You know, people get hit with stuff or broadsided with things through sickness, through all kinds of different things. And if they, if a lot of times people, when they get a severe setback, they don't believe they can come back. Right. Right. You know, you're not 37 years. We've had quite a few setbacks. You know, quite a few. <laughs> quite a few setbacks. I mean, financially, health-wise, all these things, you know. But our faith, right. our faith up pushes us to keep coming back and trusting God. You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lay not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You know, we these are some of the things that we lean on in times of crisis. Right. You know, of the fact that he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And that's so important for people to, to, to first of all, know that he actually said that. You've got to know it's so important for you to actually know what the word is said over your life. Because if you don't know, it's like GPS. If it's not telling you where to go, you're never going to get where you're going. Mm -hmm. And so with the word and with, with that communication, first unto God and then to you, people in your lives, whether that's spouses or friends or things of that nature, it allows you to develop that mm -hmm. sort of GPS to allow you to know where you're going and how to get there. Mm -hmm. So when you face those setbacks, and we're going to get into detail to some of the ones we face. But when you face those setbacks, if you know what God has said to you, what God has said about you, it gives you a level of confidence to say, this is interesting. This is challenging. This could actually just be really hard, but that God is going to get you through it. And we, are talk, we will talk about some practical ways to do that. How do you get through those seasons when they happen? What do you do? What don't you do when you're facing those challenges? You know, and it's interesting that you say that because we, you know, there are people with real uh, challenges, like some people on the brink of divorce. Mm -hmm. Some people have been divorced and want to be remarried. Uh, some people just got married. So you, we have all, when we talk about seasons of change, all of these things are very real and relevant right now. And people are really trying to figure out how to really navigate these moments. You know, why are you even trusting God? Right. Why are you even trusting God navigating these moments? You know, what could we do? What, what You know, some people want to bring a suicide. Some people feel like they're losing their mind or slip into depression. You know, are there signs? Are there some things that we're going to, what are the things that we can do or the things that we can, you know, what are the signs uh, uh, um, that, that we can look out for to be able to help our family, our friends, our loved ones, you know, navigate these tumultuous moments. Yeah, and that's that's very important because in, in today's society, you, you hear so much conversation about mental health. Well, actually what we're hearing about is the illness of mental disorders or mm -hmm. the the negative side of mental health all of us have mental health you may have good mental health or you may be suffering a challenging state of mental health so we all have mental health and in the season of change that people find themselves in it's it's an absolute blessing to have someone that you can talk to mm -hmm. Because you mentioned it earlier about people suffering in silence. You're going through something and because of the persona or the facade even that you want to look perfect and everything about your life is great. And, you know, you've seen it. If you're on Facebook, everything in that person's life is perfect. Nothing ever goes wrong. Well, that may not really be true, but that's just what people see. And then they become depressed because they say, well, I don't have that kind of house or I don't have that kind of car or I don't have that kind of husband. And they become depressed because they don't know 
that even a good relationship has seasons where it's not, where there's challenges, where there's tough times, where people have to navigate to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping to be able to share throughout the course of the conversations we have some good tips, some good strategies, even maybe some resources to help people get through these challenges. We're going to share with you painfully true, uh, transparent situations we've yeah. been through because we can speak best from that and speak from um, our own position and know we got through that. Right. And so we are able to offer you those tips and hopefully they will help some of you and be beneficial to, to many of you to help you get through those different things. Um, whether that be through formal education that we've participated in, whether that be through ministerial training, whether that's through just life's experiences, we're hoping to be able to help. We're hoping to be able to give you some good Bible-based encouragement mm -hmm. with some good practical answers on how to get through some things. Absolutely. You know, and as we as we're really getting close uh, to the end of 2022, you know, we've been... Uh, COVID has been hanging around and hanging around and hanging around, and, you know, but as we get getting close to uh, the end of 22 in preparation of 2023, we need moments like this in the conversation corner. We need moments where we can dialogue and touch each other and be there to uh, build each other up, right? To lift each other up, never to tear each other down, right? But to lift each other up. You know, as we get close to the end of the year. And that's yeah, something and that, that's so important company. that you, you said that because mm -hmm. what we know from life is you walk outside the front door of your house, it's a lot of stuff out there waiting for you already. So the last thing you want is to be torn down in your own house. So we're going to give you one tip tonight. The mm -hmm. first tip tonight on living and getting through challenges is be the positive source be that positive hope be that positive light that somebody and that somebody might be yourself that you need to say you know what mm -hmm. i'm gonna get through this i'm not sure how yet but i know that i will and so during the course of things we're going to talk about some other stuff we're going to talk about you know the things that we talked about in our book and we're just genuinely hoping that through our sharing and our transparency and our challenges and our victories, because we've had so, so many of those mm -hmm. as well, that we hope we can encourage someone to say, I can too. I can get through this, and I'll be all right. You know, that's interesting you say that, because one of the things in that, you know, uh, uh, they said a, your mind is, is an idle mind is the devil's playground. You ever heard that? Heard it all the time, but it's not in the Bible necessarily <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. But you, you do need to occupy your mind. You said some earlier, being positive. Mm -hmm. Positive environment. You know, the Bible says bad company corrupts Corrupt. good morals, right? And all the influences and distractions that people have all around them, our children, all the distractions and things that are going on around, and are so much is pulling at their mind. So much is pulling at their mind. So, you know, we, we want to keep that. We want to be positive. We want to work on a positive mindset on Absolutely. a regular basis. And, and that's so important because you want to make sure that your mm -hmm. focus on a daily basis, that you start out encouraging yourself, yeah. you know, speaking life to yourself, encouraging yourself, telling yourself, as they, they call it affirmations, you call it whatever you want. But at the end of the day, making sure that you are speaking positively to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with weight challenges, you say, you know what? I'm not where I want to be, but I'm going to get where I'm trying to go. Mm -hmm. I may not have finished that course or that degree or whatever, but you know what? I can always go back and finish. So begin to speak positively to yourself about the things that you want to see happen in life. And we're excited about working with you all and, mm -hmm. and, and chatting with you on Facebook and, and in, the, in the group and whatnot. And so jump on over, as I said earlier, to the Conversation Corner with Cece and Dr. Selena on Facebook and let us know what you want to talk about. Because maybe we have an answer. Maybe we've lived through what you're dealing with. And we will be glad to share it with you because we survived. Yeah. And you can too. And you can too. You know, and, and 
And we're going to be talking about great subjects. Just like we said, we're going to talk about the family. We're going to talk about finances, right? We're going to talk about fitness, right? We're going to talk about having a plan, you know, uh, having a plan. Because again, in end of end of 22, going into 23, we need to have a plan. Yeah, don't People don't plan to fail, but they what? Fail to plan. Yeah, we, we want to have a strategic plan. Because let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I love hope. I believe you do too. We love hope. But hope is not a success strategy. Yes. So I just want you to understand that. Hope is not a success strategy. So, Gotta have something yeah. to go with that. Yeah. And so we're excited to talk to you all tonight. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And we look forward to being a part mm -hmm. of your success story. Yes. And I'm, we're really excited about that because we know by doing this and, and helping people up, we're going to hear some testimonies. We're going to hear some success stories. We're going to hear some tremendous things that we want to also in turn share with others to help others, to see others be built up, to see others grow, to see others mature, because it's a generational impact. What we do in our lives and our children are watching. Guess what? Many times people don't realize it. your children end up doing the same thing, following the same pathology. Right. So we have to in demonstration more than conversation. We have to set a good example. Right. Of success. What does that mean? What does that look like? You know, and in, how, in to, get yeah. there. how to get there. It's like crossing a bridge. You can see the other side, but you're not sure how to get there unless there's a bridge. And so mm -hmm. hopefully some of the things that we talk about will help. We'll be able to help you create those bridges in your life. Absolutely. And we're excited about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're excited about it. And, um, I want y'all to stay tuned, right? Because now we're going to be coming live right here on this broadcast every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every Tuesday, I want you to mark it. Every, every Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Put it on your calendar. Set your alarm every Tuesday because I want you to invite others to come in. Because let me tell you something. Even though if you're doing okay, how about somebody you know or a loved one may be struggling, Right? And, and I remember, and I want to say this real quickly, I remember when someone, one of our business partners was struggling, and I didn't know, and he had a he had a gun, he was in another state, had a gun to his head, he's getting ready to take his life, and the, guess what? Um, I, I called him, and I didn't know what was going on, but I found out later that he was in that really bad season of his life, and he was getting ready to do that, and We're I called him. going to tell you how yeah. the interaction saved his life. Yes. So come on back and join us next week. Yes. Next week, right here on the Conversation Corner. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, better is available. God bless you all. See you next week right here. In the Conversation, the Conversation Corner. Corner.